In today's episode of the Motorhome Matt podcast, Matt is going to Manchester for the Caravan Motorhome and Holiday Show 2024. Yeah, looking forward to it. It's going to be a nice, nice week away in Manchester, up in the north. And we answer your questions on keeping your battery voltage high in winter, uh, SIM cards, and a Scotland's fans meet and greet. What's that all about? Okay, the new. Welcome to the Motorhome Matt podcast. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. Industry insights, expert advice for the world of motorhomes, caravans and camper vans. And it's brought to you by thatleisureshop.com. Now, do remember to follow on your favourite podcast app. Or if you're watching on YouTube, please hit the subscribe and the bell. Brought to you by arabasecreative.co.uk. Straight into it then, uh, Matt. Uh, you're about to head off to Manchester for the Caravan Motorhome and yep. Holiday Show 2024. I've got to go in a minute, so come on. We've got to get on with this. Yeah, what's different about this show then? <laughs> well, we're looking forward to it, I have to say. Uh, and I'm the, the organisers have absolutely sold out the floor plan, which is amazing. Um, and there are more dealers there than last year. And they're promising more than double the vehicles they had last year because that was one of the criticisms of the show I have to say that there weren't many motorhomes and caravans to look at which was fair there weren't uh, but this is a really different show to perhaps the other indoor shows so the ones in Birmingham for example um, this is a show uh, where the exhibitors are the dealers not the manufacturers so this is dealers spending their own money to take a stand which is not cheap it's, you know they can spend tens of thousands of pounds to go to a show like this and they're taking their own stock uh, so we are expecting to see a wider range of motorhomes from a range of manufacturers uh, and more dealers than were there last year so and this year of course dealers have got stock that's been the big difference uh, supply chain has eased certainly and with last year dealers maybe had five or six motorhomes on the forecourt they're back up to 50 60 or more so uh, yeah it's going to be an exciting week and what's the destination show next door? Uh, that's another thing that catch people out. You're walking around looking at a Swift, a Bailey and an Adria motorhome and then suddenly you're looking at a stand promoting the Maldives or Egypt. It's like, hey, <laughs> what's happened? And you haven't noticed that the colour has changed of the carpet that you're walking on because you've walked from the motorhome caravan and holiday show into the destination show which is co-located with this show uh, so they kind of split the hall into almost half uh, the destination show is a little bit smaller but it's lots of smaller stands with lots and lots of tourism destinations tourist boards come and take a stand travel partners come with a stand uh, and it's a great little show to go and walk around to get some inspiration to go traveling maybe outside of the uk europe and further afield so it's a really interesting spin on a day out i have to say so if you go along and buy ticket for the motorhomes you get into destination show free as well that's do you? right yeah it's an extra bonus so you can walk around that show as well and it is fascinating well then what are you waiting for get going or as they say in manchester what do they say in manchester? E by gum, get going <laughs> <laughs> right i'm off i'm off north right see you later <laughs> and don't run over the coronation street cat we're here, we've made it. We're at the Caravan Motorhome and Holiday Show 2024 here in the heart of Manchester at the beautiful Manchester Central. What a venue. This is the first show of the year for many of us. And if you've never been to a show before, a brilliant first show to come to. We're gonna take a look around the show and speak to some of the exhibitors. The show features around 60 exhibitors with dealers and businesses from the local region. This year it's great to see more than double the number of motorhomes that we had here in 2023. And there's a range of motorhomes from Adria, from Leica, from Swift, from Bursner and many more. Plus there's a huge number of awnings as well. And of course we've got caravans and accessories, so plenty to come and see. I'm delighted to be joined by the show director. This is Rob Debenham. So the, the big elephant in the room, Rob, last year we had few vehicles in the show. Yeah. We know why, supply chain, COVID, all of that stuff. Yeah. It's quite different this year. Yeah, it, yeah, it is different this year. We've, we've more than doubled. Yeah. We've more than doubled the number of units. And, that's what visitors 
asked us to do. Right, okay. And, and yeah. the, the market has enabled us to do it this yes. year. We tried to do it last year, but we just couldn't. Uh, so there's more than double the number of units in the show this year. Which yeah. and, and so far, feedback from uh, from dealers and from visitors has been really positive. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really quite pleased. Certainly, we've been talking to both the mm. exhibitors and visitors. It's really positive feedback. Yeah. What a lovely feel the show is. It's a much slower pace than maybe some of the other indoor shows. Is it that is. fair? Yeah, I think that's really fair. I think that's... I think that's built upon the fact that um, that this is uh, a regional show. It's not a national show. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not trying to be a national show. It's a regional show with pre-selected uh, regional expert dealers. So our, the visitor pool for the show is probably a 60-mile circumference of, from where we are, and pretty much the exhibitor pool is from a 60-mile circumference of where yeah. we are. So we've got, we've got local dealers talking to local people, and I think that means that when they start to engage properly, there's no, there's no fuss to get it done right now, because actually they're on the doorstep. Yes. So they can kind of dip in, dip out. The number of vehicles that we've got and the number of visitors that we have actually means that you probably get more time to just chill and look at a, a vehicle and a product properly, yes. get inside without queuing for 10 minutes or 15 minutes. It's just much more, um, it's slightly more leisurely. It's a leisure vehicle show that's leisurely. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I just, I'm going to write that down. Right, that's a good, that's a good, <laughs> good positioning statement. Yes, Use right. it. Yeah. And 2025, any plans you can tell us? Uh, we're looking at trying to extend. There are other facilities at Manchester Central, so there are other halls at Manchester Central. Um, and so we are looking at that. Of course, all these things come with extra cost. Mm. Uh, and I need to look at what the market conditions are at the time as well. We are definitely 100% back here in its current configuration, absolute minimum. It might be an opportunity for us to, to drive it up a little bit more uh, in 2025. And which element of the show do you think you would grow if you're given the opportunity to? Uh, I, think, I think we want more tourers more motorhomes I think we've lowered the number of statics year on year so we will respond to uh, visitor feedback for that because that's the reason why there are less statics this year and more tours and motorhomes because that's what visitors want to see mm -hmm. so um, so it might well be more to more tours more motorhomes uh, I'd, I'd like to see some more parks I'd like to have a bit more of a park area because that ties in really neatly with the holiday and travel show over there as well the idea of actually selling a destination so as camps, well as, as, campsites. Yeah, as well as a vehicle to get there, selling the campsite. So I think there's, I think there's room for us to, that's the sizzle, isn't it? To sell yeah. the sizzle, because that's why people buy these units, is to go to these amazing places. Yeah. That's the point. They don't just buy them so they sit on their drive and kind of look and then wax them once a month. They buy them as a means to an end so they can get out and experience with their family, with their friends, or get away from their family and get away from their friends, depending on what reason they bought. Depends what they bought it. It depends what reason they bought the unit for. Um, so I'd like to see maybe some more destination stuff. Now I'm delighted to be joined by Glenn uh, at uh, Preston Caravans and Motors. Glenn, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, Matt. Good, nice to see you. And you? How's the show for you? Well, Matt, this show we've been coming to for many, many years, and it's great on many levels. Um, we get to basically showcase our dealership, which is about 35 minutes from here, mm. um, and we can present ourselves and show people that on the doorstep, relatively speaking, there's a dealership that rents motorhomes, sells new and used caravans and motorhomes. We have a big owning showroom, we're specialising accessories, and we can service and repair the vehicles. So it's great to actually put across that that's what yeah. we can do, and it's not very far away. Yeah. But also, obviously, we can sell vehicles that we bring here, which obviously, you know, we do. But also, the other real important factor for us is the timing. Because it's what we would call a curtain raiser, it's the first sort of exhibition in the uh, new year, yeah. we can get a real feel of market trends. Mm -hmm. We can get, you know, a perspective of what the customer wants, um, and equally, the sort of industry vibe and information people can get. So by that, I mean there has been a significant difficulty over these last few years in getting chassis. Uh, manufacturers have problems with components for all the reasons that we know, mm. the Covid catch-up, Ukrainian situation. But now we're just starting to see the chassis becoming more readily available. So this exhibition can 
put that across to people. Yeah. It can confirm that, you know, the caravan and motor on business is very much open for business. Uh, and we've got now a situation where they can come along, see something, order it and get it within a few weeks rather than saying it's going to be eight months and you know they, they, they basically just get fed up with that which is understandable yeah. so that's a real positive and i think also we're starting now just to see a little bit of uh signs of economic uh recovery where mortgage rates are coming down a little bit now hopefully in the spring or even sooner, hopefully, interest rates will start to come down. Because again, that's been a bit of a hamper. Yeah. You know, trying to uh, get a finance deal that meets people's budgets has been a bit difficult. But hopefully, we, we can see that that will improve. So Glenn, I get the impression you're feeling upbeat about 2024 and the year ahead. I think, uh, Matt, you know, you've got to feel upbeat. Um, we've got uh, a great array of, of products. As I say, the uh, chassis are now starting to come through, so that's a real, you yes. know, shot in the arm. Um, and as I say, hopefully, uh, from an economic perspective, things will start to improve and then there's going to be some momentum gathered. Yeah. yeah, that's what we're hoping for, for sure. Yeah, same here. So, Glenn, tell us about your charity draw that's available here at the show. Yeah, OK, Matt. Um, well, we've got a child-size caravan, um, which we've got in the foyer of the exhibition. Uh, and we're encouraging people to come along and buy a ticket. Um, and it's all for uh, St. Catherine's Hospice, which is a charity very close to our hearts. And so, uh, yeah, if we can raise a few quid for them, Good for that'd you. be even better. So, Glenn, where can people find out more about the charity draw after the show? So they can go onto any of our social media sites or onto our website, which is prestoncm.co.uk. You remembered that without I did. A prompt. I did. That was good, though, wasn't it? <laughs> very good. Have a great rest of the show. Great to see you. Thank you very much indeed, Matt. Thank you. Cheers. So this is Tom from Landseer, who are here demonstrating the accessible step, yep, uh, which is awesome. Uh, but you actually build the vans as well, don't you? We do. So we do the full conversion that you see here, which is based on the Ford Transit Custom. Yep. Um, and we turn it into a, a day van slash camper van. Um, and we had quite a few inquiries about wheelchair access into leisure vehicles. And so we decided to fit this auto lift Yep. Um, to the side of it and do some small modifications to allow it to be classified as such. Yep. Yeah. Which is quite an unusual thing in this market, isn't it? It is, but something nice to, to offer, I think, yeah. you know, and something yeah. that's perhaps not catered for on the scale that it should be. Yeah. Now you're here with Preston Caravans and Motorhomes. Yes, indeed. How's yeah. the show been for you? It's been great, yeah, yeah. It's nice to have a show on our back door, so to speak. We're only 30 minutes away on the yeah. train. Um, and usually we're travelling quite far across country to uh, to go to these shows generally. So this is nice to be at. Yeah, yeah. and indoors in the warm as well. And Very the dry. much. Yeah, that makes a difference as well. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So where can people see you and Landseer this year? You're at some of the other shows. Yeah, we're still deciding which shows we're going to be doing, but we'll certainly be at the Norfolk show, which yep. is always very good for us, uh, where we have a strong dealership down there. Um, and we may well be doing more shows with Preston Caravans, and the guys are great over there, based on Blackpool Road. Yeah. And they have a couple of demonstrators of ours to show. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, we look forward to seeing you around the rest of the country yep. through the year. Thanks, Tom. Great stuff. Nice to meet you. Have a good show. Cheers. I'm sat with the lovely Phil Barker at MB Motomes in a beautiful Burstner. This is glorious, isn't it? It's stunning. Burstner Elegance, probably one of the best products that Burstner are currently manufacturing. Yeah. Um, so we're at Manchester Show with it. This particular one's under 83,000, but proved really, really popular. And how's the show been generally? Yeah, the show's been good. Yesterday, I think we've seen some really good footfall. Lots of good customers, genuine customers, people that are really thinking about buying or trading up. Some of them that are getting smaller, they want to downsize. So yeah, really good feel to the show. And are you finding many people are coming and they're buying at a motorhome for the first time? Um, no, I'd say that the first time buyers, we had a lot of them as a result of COVID, at the back end of COVID. Mm. But no, I'd say that we've got a lot of customers changing. They probably bought what they had to buy. They couldn't get anything else at that time. So lots of people now understand what they want and they're changing for what they want. So we're going to see a lot of second-hand motorhomes coming back into the market then, you think? Yeah, I think there's quite a lot of product coming on the market. It was very buoyant with you stock early part of last year. But we're starting to see a bit more normalisation of the prices in the market. 
So you are going to see more stock. You are going to see those vehicles with fairly low mileage on them. And hopefully you're going to see them at a bit more of a realistic price. So does that mean you think prices are coming down? Um, I don't think they're coming down. I think they're just no longer inflated as to what they were. Okay. At the trip end of COVID, we really did see a surge in, in demand. Their customers were buying whatever they could get their hands on. Mm. It was pushing retail prices up. The, the whole supply chain was falling apart, so everything was getting more expensive. And I think we're just back to where we were pre-COVID, really. So how was 2023 for MB? Uh, 2023 was our strongest year but we set records every year, if I'm honest with you. Mm -hmm. So we're selling just shy of 400 units. We take on another manufacturer with Hymer, but that didn't come on to the latter end. But yeah, I think your, your whole dealer network, whether that be caravans or motorhomes, saw a really good year last year. Yeah. Now, you went at the show this year. Was this your first time at this show? Yeah, so we did Event City, which was mm -hmm. normally in the Trafford Centre. It was a bigger facility. We could display more product. And we did that as MB in partnership with Burstner. And then we've looked at this show. It's generally a bit, quite a bit smaller for us. It wasn't really on our radar, but we, Greater Manchester is a big area for us. With a lot of customers there. So we've brought a smattering of our product, try to give people a feel that we're still here and we've got all these brands that we can serve them with. Yeah, yeah. And your view then for 2024, how you think it's going to be? Yeah, I think 2024 will be strong. I think... From a customer point of view, I suppose the power isn't now all in the dealer's kind of forecourt. It's a bit more back to normal. There will be deals about. They're not going to be massive, but you can have a bit more choice. You're going to be able to get the spec you want, and you are going to get better availability. Yeah. And you think the timeline, the, the supply chain timeline is going to improve this year? Yeah, definitely. I think we've still got an overhang. I'd be lying if I said we didn't. But I think those time scales of eight to nine months are going to be halved. I think you're going to really? be able to, yeah, you're either going to be able to get your product at your forecourt, depending on the brand that you're after. But otherwise, I think you're into three to four months is more realistic, really. That's exciting. I'm with you on that, Phil. <laughs> yeah, it's good for me. Yeah, absolutely. I want to be able to sell the stuff and get it to the customer, particularly when the sun starts shining in March. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's great news for the customer, good news for the market great news for the network well here's to a brilliant year for you and the team at mb and we'll see you at the next show fingers crossed look for so i'm here with a new exhibitor not just to this show but actually to the industry with gps bob this is jamie hi jamie how are you doing you all right yeah very well you're very welcome so this is your first motorhome show ever it is yeah it is yeah why is that then what's brought you here um well we we're, we're pretty new to uh, tracking market um we've done a lot of done a lot of sales throughout last year and we've Probably seen that it's a lot to do with motorhomes, so we thought we'll come here, give it a go, and see how it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yours is a tracking product yeah. that keeps a motorhome secure. Yeah. Uh, Thatcham approved. Yes, you uh, can get Thatcham approved devices from yeah. us. Yeah. And other types of tracker as well. Yeah, well, a little bit different to everybody else though, because normally you'll buy a tracker, uh, you pay so much for it up front, and then you sign up to a monthly fee. Yeah. But with ours, what we do is we charge you one lump sum. So for 159.99, we can give you a tracker that'll last you for five years with no monthly fees. Well, even a Thatcham unit? Not a Thatcham unit, okay. no, because that's slightly different. It's a really intriguing product. I'd love to unpack it a bit more with you another time. Definitely. But what's your take on the show? Oh, really good, actually. I can't believe how busy it is. Yeah. We thought uh, yesterday and today would be a bit quiet and then pick up on a Saturday and Sunday. But to be fair, it's been really busy today. Good. And can we tempt you to any more motorhome camper van shows this year? Definitely. We'll be looking forward to them. Brilliant. Oh, well, I hope to see you at some of them. Great stuff. Thank you. Thanks, Jamie. really want to win a caravan holiday anyway. <laughs> One thing you might notice at the show is that the carpet changes colour from grey to blue. It's a sign that you've entered the destination's holiday and travel show which features a range of tourism operators from around the world, the food and travel stage and also the meet the experts stage. A free show you can visit too. Do you folks want a little taste as well? Because it seems like you, can't, you don't get a little taste. Well do one for you folks. There you go. That's for, the, that's for the troops there. Very nice to see you. I'll just see you tomorrow. Yes, you can.
I bumped into my good friend Jason Mortley from Tottington Motor Company. How are you doing, Jason? I'm very well, Mark. How are you? I'm very good, very good. good. Now, you've got a dealership just half an hour or so up the road. You sell new, used motorhomes. You hire them. You're a busy man. You're here at the show again. What do you think of it? Yeah. Well, uh, we were here last year as an exhibitor, and... Um, it's great to see that so many local companies are now supporting uh, the show here in Manchester. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot more vehicles here than last year, isn't there? Yeah, last year I think, uh, you know, there just seemed to be lots of awnings and the destination show seemed to, you know, uh, have a, a, g- a good amount of space where this year it's quite refreshing to see yes. there's lots of leisure vehicles. I've just bumped into a famous face here in the north of England. It's Mr. Brendan Riley. Good morning, sir. Hello, how are you? I'm How very are you? Well. It's great to see you. I think it's the afternoon now, isn't it? Is it? I think it's, yeah, lo- yeah, it's just so. lo- just past lunchtime. Yeah. So what are you doing at this show? Uh, um, going to buy a new van? Not. You know. No, no, no. Just go, I don't know because it's in uh, Manchester. It's handy because I live in I live in um, Southport, which is near Liverpool. Now you're a bit so of a local Tony celebrity, Howard, aren't you? Not really. No. Go on, you are. I've done a bit of stand up in the past. Yes. A bit of stand up. Yeah, You've stand-up. been on the telly 30. box and everything. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, but um, I was—I think I was on the television more in the first five years of my career than the last twenty-five. Yeah, <laughs> they're always looking for something new, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. they're always something fresh. Now you—you yeah. you were not long ago in Afghanistan. Tell me more. If you, yeah. Oh, do you want the stuff? <laughs> Come on, let's hear it. Right. So I'm stuck in. A, okay. So I, I, my background is to do stand-up comedy. Okay. I've done it all over the place. So I was in Afghanistan at Camp Bastion, entertaining the troops. It was a few years ago, and uh, this is in relevance to you and why we're here. Yeah. Um, the plane broke. Basically, I'll cut to the chase. We were trying to get home. I was with Jason Manford, who's a good mate of mine, and we were trying to get home. And the only flight they could get us out of um, Bastion was a proper full-blown Ministry of Defence flight, yeah? So even though we'd gone in with the troops, we were allowed on... I think it's about where it flies and stuff. So the only plane that was going out was a Globemaster going via Turkey. I shouldn't say this top secret, this. (laughs) Via Turkey... And because it was a NATO base, we had to actually be official staff of the Ministry of Defence, not entertainers working for the army. Yeah. So we needed to get ID. So basically we were enrolled into the military to get home. That's what the thing was. And the ID we needed, we needed two forms of ID. Jason was all right because he had his passport and his driving licence. But I think at the time I didn't even have my driving licence with my photo on. And the only ID I had on me was camping and caravan club id because it had my name on it and they took that as evidence that i was not a terrorist so i got out of there because i remember because they thought no terrorist is ever going to think of using this as a black way to get id (laughs) yeah so there you go so if you want to join the military go and join the camping and caravan club and they'll let you you in first they'll let you in yeah there you go top see we shouldn't say this should we uh amazing we'll tell them we'll tell them they're here at the show so how's the show been for you then brendan i really enjoyed it um i went to i went to the i think it was last year i went to the the nec and i felt it was a bit too big it was just massive. It was it was impersonal, I suppose, is the best way to describe it. So we've been having a look around some of the stalls. We've been looking at some of the vans as well. Even though I'm not in the market to buy a new one, I think I'm happy with what I've got. Got a Bailey. Right, keep it British, yeah. Um, but um, no, it's good. So you got, you got uh, of course, you got awnings and stuff. I've just bought a hose pipe for my Kadak. A big spender. The hose pipe. Yeah, tenner, a tenner, a tenner. Um, so no, Typical it's nice. northerner. It's nice. There's a nice feel to it. It's very, very, very friendly. Yeah. That's what I felt. And, I, and I, I, we were talking about this. I wasn't sure why I didn't like the NEC show. It's not that the NEC show is not good and you should go there. But I don't know. It was just like, it was too much. It was too much going on, really. Yeah. It was vast, where this is a little bit more... Um, size-wise, it's smaller and stuff. And uh, no, it's a nice feel. It's a yeah. nicer feel. I'm delighted to be joined by Brian from Glossop Caravans. And how was 2023 for Glossop? It was good, yeah. We uh, we were fortunate enough that the brands we've got, we do three brands, which is Coachman, Elderson Swift, and it was all good for us. Supply chain started to come through good, so that was good. So now I was was happy, happy enough completely. Now you're very much a caravan man, aren't you? Uh, What about motorhomes? How are they? Well, motorhomes are, are easing up a bit more. It's a bit challenging with motorhomes. I think everybody knows that. Yeah. But the supply chain, 
it is I would describe as challenging. It's better than what it was, yeah. and it can only get better. Do you so, think it's going to ease as we go into this year? Oh, it's got to do. It's got to do. I do honestly. We've got to, we've just got to make it easier for all our customers to buy a motorhome and get it on time. Yeah, simple yeah. as that, really. And what do you think we're in for this year? I think we're in for a good year. I'm very. I'm. I wouldn't like to say any different. We're confident. We've just got to be. It's a good product that we're all selling. It's a leisure industry. It's, in our opinion, with it's a challenging time, but really good. So we're looking forward to the year. Yeah, you're yeah. you're an optimistic man I every am, year, aren't I you? I am indeed. Yeah. yeah. I'm here with Monty, who looks a bit different to the rest of the visitors. How are you doing? I'm oh, fine. <laughs> now, if you're listening, Monty is a giant, bigger than me bear. Uh, what kind of bear are you, Monty? I'm. Uh... Um. <laughs> a tired bear. I don't know, I can only see it from the inside. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. A big brown bear and a pair of blue dungarees. <laughs> now, you're part of the modern mobility stand. We are. Uh, the stand selling, uh, are you selling the scooters? Well, we're showing them, selling them, displaying whatever. I mean, we have a big online shop, so yeah. it's just really letting the public know what we have and what we can do for them. And these are all mobility scooters, aren't they? Yeah. And how's the show been for you? Uh, hot. hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been fine. It's great. I mean, it's my first time, so yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Apart now, from this part. <laughs> it must be pretty warm. How many kids have you managed to scare? Oh, everyone that I've seen, really. They're not sure. They don't whether to be scared or be happy, but once they know I'm alive, they're all right. Now, I have to ask you, what was it you did that meant you got this gig this week? Um, I'm just, I'm just a village clown for the company, so it was a natural nomination, really. <laughs> I'm the clumsiest person there, so they always give me the bad jobs. Well, I hope you manage to survive it, get something to drink. Yeah, thank you very much. Have a good show. Lovely, thank you. I'm here with Andrew from Altrincham, a visitor to the show. Good afternoon, Andrew. Good afternoon. How's the show for you? It's very good. It's a nice little little venue yeah. that you can get around very easily there's not that many people here it's fantastic it's a busy Lovely. show though but it there's is space busy. isn't it yeah yeah there's plenty of room to look around yeah. and bits and pieces to see now i know that you've got a motorhome we were talking earlier what yeah. have you come to see today i mainly to see you <laughs> <laughs> well I'm, I'm honored that we bumped into well, each other yeah 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 brilliant so what are you going to look at this afternoon there's a there's a very nice Mercedes down there converted by Heimer. Yes. Superb machine. On the MB stand. Yeah. I'm here with the lovely Susie from Transcore. How are you doing? Really well, and you? I'm good, good thanks. Yeah. yeah. This is a noisy stand with all your lovely cooling units going. We can hear them in the background. Yeah. You're back at the show. You you've been to the show before. What brings you back? Yeah, it's a it's a perfect show. It's a great environment. Uh, people have got time to spend with you on the stand. Yeah. Um, they kind of know where to find us in this aisleway, but it's about having time with customers as well. Um, it's a great flow of people. It's kind of constant all day. Yeah. And people enjoy the information that you, you're giving to them. It's a nice relaxed feel at it. Do, would you say that? It is a relaxed feel. Yeah. I just had a couple who were very grateful, started asking me about boiling a kettle on a, a power pack. And we ended up going over the cooling unit and the powerless cool box we got over there. Right, okay, yeah. And they said they were really grateful for the time that was spent with them and showed them things that they maybe wouldn't have seen. Did they buy anything? They've taken the details, and yes, they will. <laughs> yes, they will. Yes, they I will. love your optimism. No, they yeah. didn't, is what I'm saying. So how was 2023 for you? Um, I would say it was quieter than normal. Obviously, yeah. we all went through all the economical changes uh, post-COVID. But I think going into 2024, it's really positive. Yeah, well, have a great show this week. And yeah, uh, we will see you. see you at loads of the shows this year, I'm sure. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm here with the lovely Hayden Yates from North Wales Resorts uh, in one of your amazing static homes. Uh, is this a static home? It's a lodge, isn't it? Yeah, it's a lodge. It's a twin unit, we call it. A twin unit. It is beautiful. Now, this is a big effort to bring a, a product like this to a show here in Manchester. It must cost you a fair few pounds to do that. Is it worth doing? It's phenomenal for us. It's, um, it's, it's a, a chance of getting to meet people that didn't have any idea of owning a holiday home, uh, but they come here for, to the show for a little bit of inspiration. They're looking at tourers, motorhomes, tents, um, everything's here, holidays, holiday destinations, and we're just another facet on the diamond of what is the British holiday home scene. 
the diamond of the British yeah. holiday home scene. I love it. Now you've got four locations, haven't you? We learned that from you last year. Yeah, we've got uh, we've actually got a new one this year as well, which is on the Tlin Peninsula. So we're on the beach of Morven Evin which is near the famous T Cork pub, which is uh, yes. voted as one of the top ten yeah. pubs in the world, I believe. Yeah, it is, yeah, fantastic. So, um, how's the show been for you then? It's phenomenal. It's, a, it's been really, really busy. The first two days have really took everyone by surprise because I think last year everybody knows in the industry was quite a, quite a, a difficult time where people had decided to stay at home and gather their thoughts and think about cost of living crisis and all of those kind of things. But I think this year is going to see a completely different mentality and a different sort of change of attitude, really. I think people are just bored of sat at home and not spending their money so yeah. I, I've got bored not spending my money so I think people are going to be a, a little bit of a different mindset this year hopefully yeah fantastic and have you had some good inquiries so far this week phenomenal we've already got some fantastic appointments set up for the for the coming weeks when we get when we get back um, so we just come here to find customers rather than sell the holiday homes here at the show yeah. so we find customers that are interested in doing something like this and um, we show them where they can be located when they get back because they've got four different opportunities to do that in North Wales with us so it's uh, when they see the homes in their own situations in Anglesey in Snowdonia on the Clint Peninsula there's lots to choose from yeah they are beautiful Hayden I have to say I love them Thank I mean you. I'm a motorhomer through and through but you know I can see myself in one of these I have to say maybe we could do a deal we've had a private conversation off air Matt and I think you've already done the deal <laughs> I love it. It's great to see you again. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you, sir. I'd like to say a huge thank you to everyone that took the time out to speak to me, both visitors and exhibitors. Highlights for me have been certainly getting a positive view of what everyone feels they're in for for the year ahead. 2024 promises to be a buoyant year. Visitor footfall at the show has been strong. Visitors seem too to be really enthusiastic about getting into a motorhome or caravan and many for the first time. It's been an exciting show. Highlights for me also had to be interviewing Monty the bear, my very first interview with a real life bear and getting a cheese paw courtesy of Andrew Dickens. Very tasty. I look forward to seeing what the show will bring in 2025 and to seeing you in the next episode of the Motorhome Map podcast. In the meantime, I'm off to my Airbnb for a little lie down. Oh. Matt's back. Hello, Hello I'm back. The Manchester show. You're just like <laughs> Doctor Who. Um, Doctor Who? Yeah, just like it's time travel, isn't it? Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. I, there was no time travel. Was there not? No, it was a good few hours north, though, and a good few back. Mm. Yeah. Having a good time? It's been a great week, I have to say. Yeah, really good. Great fun. Did you have a BAP? A what? A BAP, you know, one of those sandwiches. Up no. north, a northern BAP. No. Black pudding? <laughs> no, it didn't have a black pudding. <laughs> no. We did have some lovely meals out, though, with some great people. So, yeah, it's been a good week. Yeah, nice to be back. It's the Motorhome Matt podcast with me, Keith Gooden. And me, Motorhome Matt. Brought to you with that, leisureshop.com. John Moore is in Cheltenham. Hi, Matt. Uh, it's John here from Cheltenham. I'm living in my uh, motorhome full time at the moment, and I've got uh, 600 watts of solar panels and two large gel batteries, but finding the voltage is dropping now the weather is getting colder. Have you got any tips on how to keep the battery voltage higher? as I guess they just aren't charging as well during the day as they were uh, when it was warmer weather. For instance, uh, would leaving the diesel heater on uh, during the day on really low, would that sort of keep the batteries topped up better? Um, any tips would be greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. There you go. It's John Moore and Cheltenham, uh, Matt, talking about his batteries. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. John, you, you're onto something there about keeping the batteries warm, and certainly the, the ambient temperature they're operating in, keeping that above freezing, that's definitely going to make an impact. It's a real challenge, you know, trying to keep batteries charged at this time of the year. Uh, with all that solar on the roof, you know, they've got limited time to recharge, uh, and if you're draining heavily off the batteries, then you are fighting a losing battle there. Um, it's going to be about monitoring your consumption 
during the day and during the night um, trying to make sure that the solar panels are clean so they've got the maximum opportunity to recharge the batteries i mean really the next step john it sounds like you've gone all out with solar on the roof um, is to take a step up to lithium um, but you know as you know john i'm sure it's going to be an expensive step um, gel batteries are great they're very very heavy and very effective um, but the only thing i can suggest really is take a step up to lithium um, or just try and be very very conscious of what you're consuming absolutely and i've got solar panels at home i think i've mentioned it before yeah uh, and this quarter is always uh, one of the lowest quarters we live in the northern hemisphere it's only light for six to eight hours a day in in the yeah. winter which means on a bright day that's probably you're going to get four or five hours charging time once the sun comes up and once it sets um uh, and uh, uh, that's not long even if you've got lithium batteries uh, i think you're gonna to have to wait till spring yeah it's a, as i say it's a challenge this time of the year uh, it's, it's a common conversation throughout the motorhoming world and the boating world as well uh, people living on boats have the same challenge um, and you know you see an increased number of canal boats absolutely covered in solar um, and what they're battling really is this time of the year where they're trying to maximize the charge from the sun um, so make sure you're always parked in as direct sunlight as you possibly can be um, and just trying to optimize your chances really the other thing to remember is of course a diesel heater leaving that on has a fan and that is going to drain the batteries so you know it's a double-edged sword really keeping them warm is a good idea uh, but that's going to drain itself so it's yeah, it's a difficult one Carol Smith's in Hastings. Hi, she says, we met you at Shepton Mallet and you told us about the £50 Amazon MiFi SIM. I think it was 120 gigabytes, bits, bots, but can't remember as we bought one off you. Thank you. Hi, Carol. It's nice to see you again uh, or hear from you again. You did buy a SIM card from us. Yeah, it was a 120 gigabyte data only SIM. Uh, they were on Amazon. It was an EE SIM. Uh, there are loads of them out there. I have to say they're quite hard to find on Amazon because it seems the resellers uh, are sort of disappear. So we are actually, as a result of your question, Carol, we're going to go and buy some and we're going to put them in stock at that leisureshop.com and they're going to go in stock at cost so we're not going to mark them up it's just an easy solution to find a sim card for your wi-fi router uh, which is what we were talking about and i was talking about this week at the manchester show um, they are a brilliant solution 120 gigabyte they last for 12 months they're data only and they are 50 pounds so um, if you, you can find them on online but we will have them in that leisureshop.com i'm going to go and order some this afternoon fantastic thanks carol for that stephen Mill- Elvins in Wishaw. Ah, I know the wizard of Wishaw. John Higgins, the snooker player. My oh, wife yeah. was the uh, um, operations manager for World Snooker for 23 years. Was she really? Yes, she was. Wow. Really. She was really. I've got a cupboard full of waistcoats. I bet you have. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen says, I hope you had a very happy Christmas and a new year with your family. Are you doing any meet and greets with the fans in Scotland? Ah, uh, here it is. I see. No. What? <laughs> <laughs> do you know we hope to go to scotland it's a beautiful country and uh jude and i are planning to take the motor home up and do a bit of a tour of some of the coast uh this spring so yeah we'll let you know when we're up there and we'll give you a wave be fantastic wouldn't it you can meet up with matt we do a matt meet <laughs> <laughs> a matt meet in scotland scotland uh, so there is a show in scotland but no we're not going to, it's a long way for us to go for a show yeah because um, he's down in the southwest of england it is yeah. a, a, a long way but absolutely 100 percent. if matt can get there he will get there for you and we, we would love you. to we've been trying to go yeah. for the last few years and i'll be honest we've been a little bit frightened about going um since covid and all those horrible stories that we've been hearing but uh, recently spoke what, are the scottish more infectious than the rest of the world are no they? but just all the awful stories about motorhomers being getting a bad rep or oh yes you know being yeah. abused and so on yeah. so it was Gemma and Campbell from Highlands to Hammocks mm-hmm. we had them here mm-hmm. we've got a lovely episode with them uh, and uh, they convinced me that all those stories yes some of them are true but they are absolutely not commonplace so it's like right okay we've renewed confidence to go so we've done bits of NC500 and we've done bits of travel around Scotland I've done it on two wheels I've done it in a classic car done bits of it in a motorhome but we want to go and have a week or two if we can carve it out the diary 
uh, to go and take our camper up there and, and uh, have a little tour around. So, yeah, we're hopeful we can do it. Well, Claire is in Aberdeenshire. We have lots of listeners and viewers north of the border. Do you still do an EU checklist and handbook, please? Love your podcast with Keith. Keith. Not with Chris <laughs> or Man Mattress, as I was called, I think, before. <laughs> Keith, that's me. Thanks, Claire. We do, yes. Uh, it is thatleisureshop.com forward slash Europe. In fact, I've been talking about this at the Manchester Show this week. Now, there are a few things to note, though. There's a video on that page you can watch, and there's a checklist you can download. A couple of things in it are now inaccurate. So I refer to, for example, the ETIAS scheme and say that that's being introduced mid-2023. When we recorded it, that was true. It's now been postponed to May 2025. Can't you overdub it like they do in the Hollywood films? Not with the YouTube video, sadly. Play. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Be like Heidi. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Remember that program? Your yeah, money, my funster. <laughs> <laughs> funster yeah money funster no you can't do that with a youtube video sadly oh. but the etias has been delayed so this is the uh, european travel i can't remember what it stands for uh but it's basically a, a visa exemption uh, uh certificate that means you can travel in europe without a visa uh, there's a cost seven euros go and download the guide there's all the info in there when it's being introduced has been delayed and it might even be delayed again but it's at the moment as we record this it's may 2025 2025. 2025. Not 2024. 2025. But it says 2023 on the video. It does. <laughs> Confused? You will be. Yeah, welcome to UK <laughs> government policy and Europe. Cheers, Claire in Aberdeenshire. OK, if you're not asked Matt a question, it really is very simple. It's mhmp.info forward slash ask Matt. That's Motorhome Matt podcast, mhmp. mhmp.info forward slash ask Matt. It's really easy to do as well. You can just fill out the form and submit it. Or we'd love it if you'd click the orange button and record your question. Please tell us where in the country you are. We can put a pin in the map uh, and then we can share your, your question onto the podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, please do click the bell and subscribe and that's been brought to you by arabasecreative.co.uk.